Now, here's a clever thing you can do with De Moivre's theorem. Suppose I start with cis 2 theta. De Moivre's theorem tells me that's the same as cis theta squared. But watch what happens when I expand these cis's. This one is cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. And this one is cos theta plus i sine theta squared. Now, this is a squared, so let me expand that again. Cos squared theta plus i to cos theta sine theta plus i squared sine squared theta. That's just my expansion of a plus b squared being a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But i squared is negative 1. Let me put the real parts together. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta plus i to cos theta sine theta. Now something interesting happens. The real parts here must be the same, and the complex parts must be the same. Sorry, the imaginary parts must be the same. So that means cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And imaginary parts, sine 2 theta is 2. I'm going to rearrange these the opposite way, because year 12 should recognise it to sine theta cos theta. And I have here two trigonometric identities that just fill out very simply from an application of De Moivre's theorem. Year 12s, do you remember how hard it was to prove these two identities last year? So, this method gives you access to many of these kinds of trigonometric identities. Try for yourself. What happens if I put 3 theta or 4 theta here? Can you get me um, trigonometric identities for cos 3 theta and cos 4 theta? And sine 3 theta and sine 4 theta? Have a go. Year 11s, I'll remind you of this again next year because it's actually content from next year's syllabus. Year 12s, this is something from last year's syllabus that we didn't do last year because you didn't yet have complex numbers. I kind of agree with them, there's no easy place to put it. But now you can now you've seen it, so when you get to the end exam, if they have it as assumed knowledge, you have actually had a go at doing it. This is why I'm encouraging you to have a have a practice. You are going to need Pascal's triangle to expand the larger numbers because this expansion is going to involve many terms. For the benefit of year 11s, here's how that works. You take, the one, you take numbers like this, you put ones on the ends, and you add the two numbers above for each row. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. Next row, 4, 3 and 3 is 6, 4, 1. 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So the expansion of squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The expansion of a plus b cubed is, maybe I should write it, a plus b cubed is what you do. You go 1a cubed, 3, you decrease a's power and you increase b's power a cubed, sorry, a to the 1, b squared, went the wrong way, plus 1, b cubed. This one says, I'm going to struggle to fit it on the line, it's a to the 4th, 4, a cubed, b, 6, a squared, b squared, 4, a to the 1, b cubed, 1b to the fourth, and so on. 
that's how you use Pascal's triangle to come up with these coefficients, which you're then going to substitute in here with the i's, i squareds, i cubes, etc. And then you're going to have to simplify your i squareds, i cubes, i the fourths, and so on. Have a go.